Hello, welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel and today is a prep and chat video. I'm going to be working on um, revamping some of my Arthur Scott Bailey materials. I'll tell you about that. And I've got the case for preschool homeschool to lay out for you um, from my point of view. Okay, so I'm working on the floor in my dining room. Um, just because there's more light in here. <laughs> Sorry, I still have the stifles, so excuse me. So let's start with my prep. So I've talked about this before. I've shown it in different capacities. So um, as you know, if you've been here before, uh, the base of our homeschool education is the Robinson curriculum. And what they're really famous for is their book list. So um, on the book list were some Arthur Scott Bailey books and if you don't know about RC you everything is downloadable so everything on the book list is in the public domain and they have them all for you all the files of all the books so it's really convenient but you can if you're not an RC um, customer you can find those titles you know in on your own in the public domain you just have to do all the searching and I run into a lot of like formatting issues when I try to find things on my um, you know sometimes I'm trying to find things in the public domain like off the list and um, I can have a hard time with formatting and stuff like that, font and all that kind of thing. But um, the Arthur Scott Bailey books, um, these are titles that I believe, maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't think any of these were on the RC list. Uh, it was The Tale of Jolly Robin and Solomon Owl were some of the first books that the kids read on their own. Um, but I loved them so stinking much <laughs> I went and I saw that that uh, author had a bunch of other ones and they're basically living books they're basically animal studies um, in a story form and they're funny too like they make they make me like the kids don't really get the humor because they're so good like my I'm reading like we're doing them with my seven-year-old right now and he doesn't really get most of the humor and I'll just I'll just be like cracking up and he'll and I'll have to like explain the little jokes to them but they're really funny so it's really enjoyable for you and your child to do them together if they're not a super strong reader. So what I like to do though is I, I get these big fat binder um, binders and I um, combined most of our books. So I just printed these all out full um, size, like full letter you know, size. And I printed out four stories and I bound them all together. It was like perfect. And I just made a little cover. I just found artwork, you know, from original artwork and put them all on one, I think PowerPoint. And then some of them I had to put in um, the title because I was using, not this, these weren't necessarily, I think this was a cover, but I don't think these ones were. These were other pictures from the illustrated versions um, originally. But so we've been reading through these with my second grader. Um, we've been doing all types of assignments with them. I've shared about our comic summaries. Um, for the Tale of Jolly Robin, um, I read those with him. I did, I made like study alongs. So I, I've been working with these stories a lot and I kind of have some reconfiguring that I'll think I'll do for my, my current preschooler when he gets up to these books. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go along during the prep too. Um, Oh, but these, I have one for Solomon Owl and one for uh, Jolly Robin, which are on the list. Uh, Solomon Owl's cover, Jolly Robin, like notebooking pages I made for them to use as they're reading that book. They get to a stopping point and they may want, these are links. So you could open it up on the computer and these are all safe <laughs> links <laughs> to let your kids watch videos on, like this one's the science of spring, types of feathers. Um, takes them to where they could download a free water cycle poster and they can draw it or in, they could draw in their own uh, water cycle. So like it just, it's all the stuff that like we were looking up while we were using these for science um, and, and reading at the same time, right? So anyways, I think these are the three, I think the three bucks a piece in my Teachers Pay Teachers. Anyways, so I'll leave the link for those if you're interested in if you're doing those books as well. 
But I think I, well, I think I printed out like eight total of the other stories, uh, or maybe six of the other stories, eight total. And so I have two, I have two of these big. I mean, you can, this is goes through. This can be a lot of schooling for your kids for basically free for the cost of paper and really high quality, right? Anyway, so, um, or if you have an older kid, you know, they could do this probably on their own and they're going through things faster. But anyways, I am going to, I think we've read three of the four stories with my second grader right now. Um, and somehow, even though I put like a protective, like cover on it, like plastic cover, somebody still spilled water on it. <laughs> Um, and it damaged like some of the pages, but not bad enough that like I to me that it's worth reprinting the whole thing. So I was like, well, I'm just I'm gonna reprint. Left my cover in the other room. <laughs> oh, so I reprinted the cover. And so I'm going to put the new cover on, but also so I've got to take it apart and do that. Um, I was as I was going through. So I actually think. So what I learned about the RC reading list, just from our experience, is that um, because I wanted to do the McGuffey readers as lessons with the kids every day, um, and so the books like um, The Tale of Jolly Robin, and then I think it moves on to the George Washington, The Life of George Washington, um, like the, tale, the Arthur Scott Bailey books, they they do need to be through that second at least that second reader <laughs> to be to be more on par with reading them so remember the the reading list because it's an academic reading list it's not they're not meant to be easy reads right they're not meant to be frustrating right but they're meant to be encountering new words that you know they're going to have to work to decode them um and it's supposed to be doable, but it's supposed to be a little bit of work. It's school, right? It's not reading for pleasure. It's not like going back and reading their little baby books that they can read, you know, that they read no problem, that they love, because they can look at those in their own, you know, in their spare time all they want and enjoy them. They're, it's it's kind of, it's like a brain candy, right? So they, they enjoy, but it's easy. So what I'm thinking is because uh, like I've talked, I've griped, I think, multiple times. <laughs> I gripe, but it's actually totally fine. I feel like everything's working out just fine, and I'm happy. I don't regret any of the stuff that I have, like, been required to do through my state of South Carolina. But, so, since I'm required to do science from, like, kindergarten, like, through 12th grade, um, you know, I start out with... There's a Berenstain Bears, um, but big book of science that we do in kindergarten. And then, you know, we move them into first grade and they're on the reading, working the reading list. You know, we're doing our McGuffey readers. I personally use both the revised and the original set um, just to slow, just to slow the process down. And um, so they're not necessarily just memorizing the less the words and the less you know so I, I just go back and forth so right now my second grader is still reading the second revised reader and the first original reader so um you know the first original reader is like this thick you know the revised one's like this so but they're like where that he is is about the same level of reading but anyways for science there's so many i, just, I mean the, it's just absolutely endless possible I think a really good, and we, we have used this for science before, a really good, like simple, uh, next to free thing that you could do is to pick one of these stories and use it as, um, you know, not like a nature study. Like we do nature studies, like, you know, when I, when I first, um, you know, RC doesn't even recommend science in these early years, but you know, if you have to do it, um, it's not really so much science as, as natural, observations you know just observing the world observing nature um i think that's great i think that's totally fine it'll help their reading comprehension you know as well because it'll just have more of a base knowledge of th so i think that my study alongs that i made are a little bit higher level than i would necessarily want to start with so while you are doing your mcguffey reading lessons with your kid and they're not really reading you know, academically on their own. Um, what are you gonna do for science? So 
you can just read these to them, right? You can read these to them or kind of with them. You can have them like read along and see what they can catch. Like they can sit in your lap and follow along with their eyes and they can see the word and hear what you're saying because they understand the concept of reading and you know at this point and then I thought instead of doing I don't want to do something like too hardcore I mean this isn't hardcore but you know it's a step up I thought I will make these like book uh, notebooking pages so I just went through these four stories I've got the tale of Betsy Butterfly the tale of Brownie Beaver the tale of Buster Bumblebee and the tale of Benny Badger and I went through the stories and I just, whenever I came across a new animal or sometimes like a habitat or something like that, weather related thing that I thought was pertinent to the, to the story or that was like pertinent to like science or like nature studies, I made a little quick notebooking page. So I just pulled an image of like, so this is starting with uh, Benny Badger. He's an American badger, right? Different than the European badger. So since these are American tales, the setting would be in North America. So um, then I just gave, you know, American badger and I just gave a space for notes. So I'm actually, I'm thinking, so either we can write down, this is what I'm thinking I'm going to do with Bo, right? So he'll be doing reading lessons with me and then his science time will be me reading a story to him and then that'll be helping build his vocabulary. He'll be hearing too. Um, and then we will, he can even like draw a picture of like what he saw in the story or like write out like some notes. We can like write, and we can take information right from the book. We can say, what did we learn about a badger here? And like, you know, well, cause they just, they're giving information about the animals or, so you can do that or you can Google it <laughs> and look up some quick facts about the American badger, right? And there's just endless, it's so open-ended. And uh, so that's what I love about notebooking pages. Just very, sometimes it's like what I love. It's, I love that for younger kids, but then as kids get older, I don't want to be thinking about what, that's why I, I like getting those notebooking pages that have everything laid out and tell you, tell the kids like what to look up or what to draw because um, I don't want to have to think about, I don't want to have to think that hard <laughs> on the fly. If I do it as a project, I set up ahead of time. Okay. But like not on the fly. Do you, you know what I mean? Okay. So I have a whole bunch of these and I'm just going to hole punch them and put them in, you know, try to find the right spots to put them in in here, get a new um, type of uh, cover page. And, um, oh yeah, I, should, I have some of these too. I have a, I had this is free in my TPT store. It's an animal research, like a little animal report um, document. They can like draw their animal in here and put the name. So I might have, you know, some of this. They could do that. That could be like their final, right? They can read through, or we, I could read it to them. They could take notes, and then their final is to do a little animal report on you know the badger the butterfly the bumblebee or the beaver right or maybe some other animal that strikes their fancy okay so this is how you turn you know you're turning like literature into textbooks right okay then while i'm working on that i'm going to talk to you about the case for homeschool preschool i i took notes <laughs> Okay, so that was a long setup. <laughs> I mentioned in my last, oh, and I forgot, I made these all into, all these notebooking pages and these, this cover into PDFs, and I'll link them down below. They're just free, and if you want to do this project, then I just, I have all the legwork done for you. <laughs> okay, so I think I talked in my last video, I mentioned what I, that I was going to talk about this because um, people... I've like repeatedly seen people like inform some stuff asking um, how much time to spend like with preschoolers and asking stuff about preschool questions like homeschool preschool. Like I said before, there's always some people that respond that you like just let them be a kid, um, just take them outside, you know, just like have them help you around the house and in the kitchen and stuff. And while I think those are all uh, valid like 
things to do with your kids and good for your kids. It's good for them to help you around the house. There is learning that happens there. It's good for them to get outside. There is learning that happens outside and development. Um, I'm not saying don't do those things, but I just don't think that those are helpful things to say to somebody who's specifically saying, asking like how much time or specific questions about preschool. Because that sounds like that's what they want to do. And there's different reasons why people want may want to do that. Um, so I, if you want to home preschool your kid at home, like that's okay. Don't feel like, like you're doing the wrong thing because you, like you have a, maybe a different circumstance or a different personality type than somebody who answers your question. You know, like I don't, honest to God, I don't care if you preschool your kid. I don't care if you let them run around, no shoes on in the mud all day. I don't care. Um, I'm just answering this question for the people that do want to preschool their kids, don't want to be shamed about it. And it's, I mean, maybe, I think these people are trying to be helpful. Um, but I'm just telling you, you're not being helpful. <laughs> Sorry. In my opinion, I think there is a lot that's like lost in translation when they're like, when you're like typing stuff. I think a lot of people, what they're trying to say is like, don't stress about it, but let me just lay out my case for preschool and then you'll see what I mean, okay? So I have three boys. I have done something different with all three boys for preschool. And it all has depended on the particular circumstances. So, I've got one. Um, my oldest, I was working. Um, I had no intention of homeschooling ever. <laughs> I had the intention of trying to provide um, and keep a job and also to um, give my kid some, where we were living there were no children like we'd moved to a new town newish to us like I went to I moved back to my college town but um, you know it's not like where me and my husband were from we had no friends or family there really and um, oh, I hate when this happens and it goes off and then I have to re I have to repunch it but, um, so I was living primi primarily around, there was a bunch of college students. So I was concerned about my kid being, um, you know, isolated and not having playmates. And he was the oldest, he had no siblings yet. So I had taken him away from all his cousins and stuff like that, right? So I, um, and put him in a preschool that, at our church. I think when starting when he was like three, and he went three days a week and it was just for like a couple hours in the morning and he really really liked it um the ladies were really nice in there and they took really good care of the kids and you know they had got to do lots of fun little crafts and things you know it was nothing like academic but he i, I think he went there for like two years and then I think in the summer, it wasn't considered preschool, but he went to like the daycare for like about the same amount of time. Because like I said, I was, I had work to do. And then I, and then I just put him into kindergarten. We, and uh, we'd moved by that time. Anyways, so my second son. And I, oh, I was still working when he was born. Um, he, had and then we moved to South Carolina from Oregon so again like we were like new <laughs> new <laughs> in an area and had no friends and family and um, he had like a speech delay like William we couldn't understand what he was saying he was like four I kept waiting thinking it would just like develop and it would be fine and he remember my sister saying it's like he has his own language because he would be like talking and it was like he was speaking but nobody knew what he was saying <laughs> it was very frustrating so was he maybe he was three three and a half something like that and we put him start going to speech once a week with this really fabulous woman named Jen Miss Jen he still talks about Miss Jen he asked me the other day 
if we could call her. <laughs> and um, I was like, I guess we could, but um, she, anyways, so that was kind of going into like his preschool like years. I think he went, I think he went to her for like a year and uh, made incredible improvements in his speech. Um, I still, he still kind of has a hard time sometimes with stuff and I have to like, um, make him stop and like repeat things and really like over enunciate a word a few times. So mom just, ha mom just has to stay on top of it, you know? And, um, he, so we didn't, so like all that time that would have been probably like preschool years. Uh, and by this time I wasn't working, I was home and I had a baby too. Um, I had Beauregard by this time. Um, Beauregard was only a couple weeks, I think he was a couple, maybe six weeks old when we moved here. <clears throat> and we moved into this like super old house and everything in it was, is, is needing to be, you know, fixed or cutesied up or all of our money, <laughs> it's all of our time, all of our money goes into this house. Um, I'm not complaining. I'm so, guys, I'm so, I'm so thankful that we bought our home and we did and that like, I always intended to stay here like a super, super long time, but I'm just so thankful to have a home of my own and not be um, renting. And I'm not like knocking renting. There's definitely, uh, it's got definitely actually got its benefits. But um, so he, all that time that would have been like doing preschool stuff, we were doing, I mean, we literally couldn't communicate, couldn't like understand him. So, he, we would like go once a week to his speech class and then after a while his teacher started sending me home, I'd ask what I could do at home and she'd send me home like a list of words or something and I would kind of watch her and how she interacted with him. I always stayed at first because I just wasn't going to leave my kid with strangers for like an hour <laughs> and then second to like see, to like observe and like learn like what was going on to understand the process and then... I learned, I done, I learned just a ton. Like I just really liked her approach to kids and like teaching them. And then, oh yeah, she was sending us home those like uh, word lists and things to work on. So probably like, like every, probably not every day, but every other day, I would sit, sit down with him and go through the list and get, try to get him to say the words. And so I, I learned this from her is I would do something like have a get out of game um, that he wanted to play or like, you know, Legos or blocks or something. And so I, I'd say the word, I don't know, whatever word it was. Let's say it was just a the, the. So maybe he was saying, uh, just saying, uh, dropping the TH. Then, um, I would coach him through it until he said it like a couple times. Get him to do all that. Sometimes I had to get out of the mirror. And um, then, when he's, then when he finally said it, we'd be like, great, good job. And I'd give him a block, right? And, or like a handful of Legos or, you know, something that we were doing, right? At the end, like just play with all that stuff. But we're kind of building onto it. Sometimes it was like um, puzzle pieces and stuff. But anyway, so I was working with him to, like about three times a week. And then, um, I know, and, and by the way, if you're doing this at home with your kids, she would, I mean, even if they didn't get it, but they tried, she'd say, good trying. And she was like, so encouraging. And I love that. So then he was able to speak. <laughs> it was like amazing. All of a sudden I could like communicate with my child and he could, I could actually know what he was thinking and feeling like it was just amazing. What a gift. And, um, so that by about that time though, it was time for, um, him to, you know, stop working with her and to, um, just be held back to being home with me. But it's kind of like, you know, we're still kind of developing. It's almost like I had to, I kind of like got to get to know him in on a, in a different way because we could speak. And, um, so we didn't, we didn't do anything like preschool ish, like outside of that, you know? And so then, um, and he also had, I kind of feel like he had some like emotional, um, like issues to kind of like get past because for so long he couldn't communicate. And so 
his frustration level I think was high and um he hadn't built up some social skills you know, just like at home and stuff you know um like maybe you normally would when you can't communicate you know so then we decided to, by this time I decided to homeschool and so I pulled so what is about about his kindergarten age and like I said he's also really really young for his um for his like grade level um <clears throat> he is like as young as you can possibly be to be in that grade if he was in like the public school system so I pulled my oldest out of public school um I, you know, I wasn't working outside the home I had planned to I actually went and got my um <laughs> mortgage license to be a mortgage broker I had just got like passed my test and done everything and I was like I'm gonna homeschool <laughs> so that was all a big waste of time and money but whatever it's all worked out right I just felt like my kids needed me more than the mortgage industry needed me they don't need me at all <laughs> and um, so he I brought Everett home and William home and I just bought a box set curriculum um, from Abeka because I don't know where to start I just I just wanted to get it all so I knew all my bases were covered and I so I did kindergarten at home with the Becca um, with William and he did fine except that I hated the curriculum but whatever so Everett went to preschool three days a week for like two years at church um, I'm sure he didn't do anything that they didn't do any writing or anything like that but um, William had no preschool because we were doing speech that year and then just went into doing homeschool with me for kindergarten and, and he was fine you guys he was fine <laughs> and then I think you can just like not do anything that much and just start into kindergarten it's fine and then Bo here's the case for preschool here's where it comes in this is a certain this is a circumstance right I don't I don't think that there's necessarily anything academically advantageous to preschool um so why do it why might people be wanting to do it I shall tell you I have three things number one then the most practically is supervision supervision issues um I have two kids in here in the school room I'm in the school room with them what is Bo doing? <laughs> he, like, I had a really big problem for a long time with him just leaving the house. Like, I was trying to just, like, let him play or whatever during, you know, homeschool time. And, like, when he was, like, three. And he would just walk out the front door. Walk out the back door. Just walk out. Like, we live, we don't, like, you, you can't be doing that. You get run over by a car. I don't know. Some mauled by some neighborhood dog. I don't, you know what I mean? There's dangerous tools sometimes left out by my husband out in the shop area um I have all these like extra locks on my doors like the kind you flip over up the top but then he started being smart and like pushing up stools <laughs> letting himself out anyway so so um supervision is like a real issue and if he's even if he's just like in the house he'll be taking the house apart he'll be putting things down the toilet he'll be taking everything out of the cupboards um, supervision. So I, uh, like I have told you guys many times before, turned my living room into the school room and our living room has a door on it. So when we go to the school room, it's like Bo has to be in there with me. He has to be physically in the same room to keep him safe first and foremost and to protect the house <laughs> um and I shut the door most of the time because it's all have my head down he'll try to like sneak out so you're like y'all oh, don't sneak out but you know he just gets up he just gets an idea in his head he's gonna go do this or that and just like bounce so supervision now the other thing is training it's training for real school right it's preschool it's not so like you don't even have to be doing anything academic at this point but I think it's 
I do think it's advantageous to teaching them good habits, such as getting up, you know, um, brushing your teeth, um, sitting nicely and quietly, being patient, listening skills. It engages them in all types of like conversations with you, which is really good for them. And it's setting them up for the school habit, like just to expect that after breakfast and brushing teeth, like we go to school and that's normal. And it's easier, I think, to the, the, early, the younger they get into a habit, you know, of any kind to keep it going. So, and then um, the daily rhythm too. They're gonna have to get it, it gives them a daily rhythm. And that's what me and, and his older siblings are doing, like he's gonna be part of the day with us, part of the daily rhythm. And so then we're like eating together at the same time. And you know, yeah, that's another thing about supervision I was really worried about is that Bo would go just get into food. And if there was like candy or any type of, he'll even get into like cough drops, right? Like I, every time we're sick and when we're done with the cough drops, I throw them away. I'm so scared that he will get something he could choke on and be in the other room and I won't know because I'm like doing school. Um, so, I mean, I know we're all trying to keep, I mean, stuff just happens. I mean, you can have all the kid locks and just stuff will get just left out. Somebody will get a cough drop and leave the whole bag down. And like, next thing you know, your toddler will put it in their mouth, right? So habits, setting up some good habits, getting them to daily rhythm with you. So yeah, so you keep, you're all doing kind of things together going out and then you can go outside all together and that's another good supervision issue because I like to do breaks. I, I do do like a, re I call it a recess. So once we get to a certain point in school, we go, um, we stop and do our chore, then we eat lunch and then we have recess for like 30 minutes of just like outdoor time and they actually are required to go outside <laughs> um, so that like I want them, unless it's like really, really bad weather. Like everyone's required to go outside, even mom. Like I have to go outside. I go outside, it's a good time to go check on the chickens, to collect eggs, to um, spend some time outside and get some sunshine and fresh air and all that, right? Three, insight for mom into this specific student. So I'm learning a lot about Bo and his emerging personality, right? He's four. You know, like the kids are just, it seems like every year seems like a vital year. Every year is a new um, developmental stage and you're like, every year you're upping what they're doing. And that sometimes that's new for me too, right? Like I haven't done this curriculum before. Or I haven't tried it this way before. And it's just a lot of energy and brain power and time. And so it can be kind of easy, I think sometimes just to tell your like younger, your littles, like Bo was getting told, like he was in the school room with us, and he had his toys, just, just play with your toys. And they're kind of getting sometimes ignored. And um, I was doing some stuff with him, but I was doing it like really, really short amount of time. Because I was just thinking, it's probably just better to let him play. It's probably better, you know, his attention span is not that long. Um, but what I was, Finding, and this is weird, and I'm not saying this is going to happen to everybody. This is just my case for preschool. Um, that and at first I thought it was a stage. He started, like, Bo started really, like, being not nice to me. He started want, not wanting me to kiss him goodnight. Like, telling me, then it was telling me, I tell him I love him, and he told me he doesn't love me. Um and want me to get away from him and like where did my baby go like who where did, where did my baby go that wanted to cuddle and love me so much and you know like I I didn't know what was happening and my husband of course he's just like it's just a phase it's just a phase and I was like I don't think so I think there's something going on like and I just decided what I probably needed to do is actually even though he didn't he was rejecting me was he actually needed more time more quality time with me so, like, if you don't have any other kids, if you're having, if you're, like, I don't know, if you, you could you would do quality time with your kid and connect with them anyway, but when, you know, like, you could do more outdoor time or more kitchen time or whatever, but for me, because I had to be in the school room with the other two, I had, I want, I had, I needed to give Bo more attention. He needed more attention, more quality time with mom, 
more school like preschool gives you the opportunity to like connect with them but and like praise them and tell them what a good job they've done right like you're so proud of how hard they worked right oh you did it you know um it's it's just a good time to um build up their abilities and their confidence so and also you know establish a deeper understanding of them as like little people and to um, make memories with them so that's personally i felt like so i was giving so much attention to the older two that he was becoming resentful but you know little kids can't tell you that this is just what i think this is just my thoughts on it and um I noticed that when I started making structured preschool for him and had specific goals and activities and I was putting the same amount of thought and effort into his school day as his brothers, our relationship has improved so much, so much. Um, he asks to play his letters with me. So I just base it around school. I figure it's just going to be part of the training process, you know? So I know I'm on the RC path and I've already, you know, I've shared my, I, I share my sequences all the time. You know, I link them below. I'll link them below again today, but I know where I, we're going. I know what he's going to be encountering in this eclectic kind of RC based curriculum that I've, I've chosen. So, I just preschool just like little baby a little baby version of that right <laughs> so that's what I've done I've just like babified everything you know and he loves it he loves it it keeps us so now there's something that anchors him that he belongs there too he's just as important as his brothers um, mom pays attention to him and his accomplishments not just to his brothers you know and I can't like sit with him all day. I can't sit with, I, so like, you know, I, the older two are getting more independent. They all have different levels. I've got a four, a seven, and an 11 year old. So they're all, they have different levels of independent like abilities, right? So I just work with that and I kind of have a rhythm of when we do certain activities about how long it takes. So like while William's doing his math and Everett and William can do their math independently pretty much at least while William's doing his portion, I can do, you know, numbers with bow or letters or whatever focus is that day. And then when I need to check William's math homework and maybe play a math game with him, you know, then I tell Bo to do a puzzle. We've got a whole drawer full of uh, puzzles and they're a good level for him. And so he's actually getting really good at puzzles, right? And about the time it takes him to do a puzzle, I could have corrected and you know uh made some mental notes or notes to myself about william's math progress then it's time for william to do his math flashcards he sets a timer he can do that on his own for 10 minutes right everett's still doing his own thing he can just in sixth grade he can truck along he can do his math he can move into his vocabulary there's a lot he can just do on his own right once we start the day and he's just going and then um he's pretty he's pretty much independent unless there's some specific family subjects that we do and then I can go back to my preschooler, right? So now maybe we're going to um, just color together, right? I've got a numbers coloring book. Uh, it's like the Bernstein Bears and you know, we just color together for a little bit and we're really just working on strengthening his hand and practicing his pencil grip, right? And we do that for a little bit and I sit right with him. I literally color with him. <laughs> It doesn't work to say, here, color this. He doesn't want to. He says, Will you help? he wants me to do it with him, right? And so I, so we sit there. I, we enjoy our, our, time, our little time together. We do that for a couple minutes, like not super long, you know. Then we maybe are going to read a story. I'm going to read a story to him. And he's going to sit and he's going to listen. And he does not, I'm not, he doesn't like to sit still. <laughs> this is training for him, okay? We read those Aesop fables. They're short. And so I can read probably at least three of them, sometimes four. And then that's about as much as he can sit still for. But, you know, he, um, but we're working towards some goals for reading, right? So he gets a trophy once we finish reading Aesop's Fables, like trophy, 
I, I've, I've sh I think I've showed it in previous of my planning videos, but anyways, um, then like, you know, it's probably about then about time for us to do our chores and he has his own chores on the chore list, right? And that he does with his brothers. They, they, they're always working in the same area of the house together, but they just have three different levels of what they're doing. And then he gets to be told, told good job. He gets to go outside when he's done with his chore while I make you know, lunch, or he can help me make lunch. And then, um, so he's like, see how he's like involved in everything that we're all doing. So we're like a cohesive unit and not mom and Everett and William are doing stuff and Bo's just like all uh, feral. <laughs> anyway, so it's been very, I would say honestly that preschool making it a structured thing has been very healing for Bo and I's relationship, which was in not the best place without it. It's, it's helped tremendously. So again, so the, my case for preschool is supervision. Number one, <laughs> number two, training and number three to grow closer to our little preschoolers. Okay. I've got everything punched. I've got my book taken apart. I'm going to have to like put down the camera so I can see which notebooking pages go where and I'll just show you the finished product. Okay. This is how it turned out. Of course I put it all back together and I forgot to put on my plastic cover and I'm not taking it all apart again. <laughs> I could try to, I could try to just slip it over the top. I just don't want to. Um, so I added little labels that I stick in there so I could just turn it to whatever story we are on. This is how it ends up kind of looking. Let's say we are going to Benny Badger and I just stuck, I kind of tried to follow the story. So as different animals or habitat or kind of things came up that I, um, just stuck it in that chapter. I was, I was like some every once in a while like um there would be like a, a break kind of like a while before anything new was introduced and so I mean I could have just spaced everything out evenly like one thing per chapter but I just stuck with it how I started was kind of putting them in as they were there was a couple things that I like added that weren't really, when I got to the very last little bit, um, let's see, I think it was in the Buster Bumblebee one, because it goes to the farm, and there was just a few things that, there's some animals at the, towards the end that maybe weren't like technically in the story, like, um, I think I added, farm girls because it you know it talks a lot about Johnny Green he's a farm boy right and so it just was like I tried not to repeat any animals that I had already um you know gone through in previous stories so even but some of the animals repeat in the stories like Mr. Crow is in multiple stories um you know the dog spot I think he actually has his own uh, his own story completely, um, but I hit, but anyways, oh yeah, farm girls. So I think I added in farm girls because we had I put in farm boys, and that kind of just got randomly stuck in there. <laughs> anyways, you can use these however you want. Um, if you so choose, right? So the, the one, the last one, I kind of had to go like more, I was just more elements of the story, right? Like the barn raising. Um, but I figure this is, this, this impacts animals, right? Farming impacts ecosystems. So might as well kind of look at it, right? Anyway, so I put it all back together. It's like one big, I think this could be a whole year. These four stories and all these like little nature studies, animal studies, habitat studies could be like a whole year of first grade science. So there we go. I'm prepped. 
we've chatted and I think I'm gonna go make some popcorn and watch a movie with my family so I will talk to you guys soon.